Welcome to Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost is celebrated usually 50 days after the death of Jesus Christ. There's also more history on Pentecost in the, in the Jewish society. There's a lot of history on the, on the word Pentecost, where it comes from. We're not going to deal a lot with that today, but I would like to invite you to come and share in this program as we celebrate Pentecost. We'll also be taking some time to pray for the unrest in America today. The unrest that is causing some uh, such sadness and racial divide. And we're going to pray that God begins to heal this land and ask God to do some miracles across the land. But we'd like to invite you to, first of all, let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Pastor Brian and Pastor Andre are going to assist us at this time. And it's just great. Why don't you just join with us in singing and glorifying our King. See you in a moment.
on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every
Pastor Brian and Pastor Andrea, we appreciate your faithfulness in leading us in worship. You know, we realize it's so different without hearing and seeing us worship with you, but know that we are, and we thank you for helping us continue to worship each week. Mm -hmm. You know, it's offering time. One day, Jesus watched in the temple as an older lady came and gave all she had in the offering. And it's one of the few times in scripture I remember Jesus actually pointing out to his disciples what was going on. And he was actually letting them know that she gave out of her lack and it was more than those who gave out of their wealth. But we want to thank you, all of you who are giving, whether out of your lack or your wealth, God tells us he loves a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. Continue to give cheerfully and he will pour out a blessing over you and your household. Just give thanks every time you give to the Lord. Amen. Why don't we just pray over those gifts today and ask the Lord to just bless them. Lord, I just ask you will bless the yes, gifts Jesus. for today. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you for the sacrifices mm -hmm. that have been made. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you for the blessings that have been poured out. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Lord, for the jobs, God, that you're going to create, yes, Lord. even in the next few days, the next few months. Lord, Thank bringing you, things back into gear mm -hmm. where they need to be. And Lord, we ask that you would just guide and direct mm -hmm. and continue to flow into lives and families in Jesus' Thank name. You, Jesus. Lord, we ask also mm -hmm. that you will take care of those needs that seem mm -hmm. so great in some lives. And you will take care of every single one of them. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are planning a drive-in oh, yeah. service, oh, yeah. weather permitting, of That's course, right. to take place in the church parking lot on Sunday, June 7th, that's next week, at 10.30 a.m. There will be more information provided uh, via our phone tree and our website. You know, and part of that, they'll be able to drive up in their car, mm -hmm. and uh, according to our governor, be able to park uh, six feet apart. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, each parking space is about, there's about nine feet in between each one, so we'll be safe. So we're gonna just choose the parking space, every other one, all the way down through. Mm -hmm. We'll ask smaller cars to be up front, right. larger cars in the back there, and uh, the, the second row will actually be staggered mm -hmm. into the next mm -hmm. spot so they can see a little easier, and, and hopefully that'll work out. We we'll also have a FM transmitter we have coming in for that service. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll have a speaker outside that'll help us to be able to hear it, but uh, the FM transmitter, they'll be able to pick up that on their radios inside of their cars, and that'll help us greatly. We'll have some bathrooms available, but we're going to limit those areas right. greatly and also limit anybody getting out of your cars. And of course, I know, we're, we're a church <laughs> that loves to hug each other and, and loves to greet each other. And, but we're going to have to hold that. off on that for a while. For a while. And it's going to definitely be that way. So we're not going to be getting out of our cars. We'll be staying inside of our cars. And, right. and it's going to be a good time. We'll get to at least see each other. That's yes, our goal. That's and right. that's our plan. And yes, we will still have the online service. Yes, we will. Yes. And that's our plan to encourage and bring everybody mm -hmm. together. And I believe it's Communion Sunday next Sunday. We're working on that also with that whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the sealed cups and uh, with the bread built in the top. And we'll be handing those out, working those out. And if it doesn't work out, we'll work on it for the next Sunday. That's right. And we're not going to do drive-in service every week. But we'll try a couple in yes. here, maybe every other week or every third week. Mm -hmm. We'll see how this one goes. This is kind of our test. 
<laughs> and uh, we'll check it out to see how that works out. And of course, just also so you know, there will not be any coffee or food or anything yeah, served no, as well. There'll be no coffee fellowship. We can't do that yet either. Yeah, none of that kind of stuff whatsoever. <laughs> and there'll be no children's church or children's no, ministries. No, no. Uh, we're going to ask them to all stay in the cars. That's going to be the hard thing, but <laughs> yeah. ask everybody to stay in the cars. Keeping kids in cars, that's going to be a challenge. <laughs> so we'll keep the service mm -hmm. shorter like we've been doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'd just be great to have everybody come together. We can just kind of wave at each other and and see each other in that way right, and that'll right. be great yes. amen amen you know this past week we've had some uh devastating things come mm -hmm. across the the u.s in minneapolis where a man was killed that uh, was totally senseless mm -hmm. there's a lot of unrest right now and and i'm just tired of the prejudice i'm tired of the hurt i'm tired of all the things that go with that and I'm just praying that God will bring a healing across this land. Yes. And healing in our lives, but across this land. I cried the first time I heard about it. And it's very <laughs> sad, and, and I'm not happy at all with it. And we're just asking God to bring a healing. I'm so sorry it even happened. It should never have taken place. And we're asking God to bring about a miracle. Pastor Becky. Why don't you take us to the throne today and ask God to do a miracle in that area? Father, we just lift up the whole Minneapolis, greater Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Lord, you know. Mm. Lord, the roots run deep mm -hmm. when we talk about racism and prejudice. It seems like the roots run deep. Yes. But Lord, you are the one who can dig out the root and kill the seed. That's right. You can kill it at the seed. And then that would kill all mm -hmm. roots, Lord mm -hmm. God, in people's lives. And Lord, I just pray that, first of all, there would be peace begin mm -hmm. to reign over that whole entire area. And Lord, even those that would want to get in the frenzy, so to speak, maybe they don't feel that way, but they just are caught up in a frenzy. That Lord, you would just keep them from getting involved as well. Lord, to the family of the one that has lost his life, I pray that you would bring comfort to their hearts. Such a tragic loss, but God, somehow, you would turn it around, oh God. We don't understand how you can do it, but we know you can do it. And Lord, peace and the unrest there, and now the distrust that's built up once again against the police, that God, you would tear that thing down and just bring trust again in the leadership there, bring trust in the, in the uh, law enforcement there as well, Lord God, and give wisdom. Lord, obviously not much wisdom was given. And Lord, I've never been a police officer, but I've known many. Lord, I know that sometimes they talk about the adrenaline that runs through the body in certain situations that it almost takes over. I'm not making an excuse, Lord God, but I'm praying that you would help those law enforcement officers to begin to have more capability of checking that adrenaline. When it seems like it might get out of control and take over, that you would just give them a check and help them to step back, Lord God, and to breathe a little bit and to give them wisdom for the situation, Lord, that they would rely on you. Lord, when we act out of our emotion or we act out of our adrenaline, Lord, that's never going to turn out good for anybody. Lord, I just pray, not just there, but there's been rumblings and ripples that have gone out from the epicenter in Minneapolis to other areas of the country, that God, you on those ripples would just bring a tidal a wave, so to speak, of peace emanating from your throne, not unrest from the frenzy and not, and not working everybody up, Lord God, but peace rippling out from your throne, peace that will pass all this nonsense will pass understanding that when people would say why how can you have peace during this turmoil but God we know that you are the author of peace you spoke to the storm the winds and the waves and they obeyed you 
And Lord, the unrest has an element from the enemy that comes in to rob and steal and destroy and kill. But you have come that we would have life, breathe life, and breathe peace now over Minnesota and all areas across our land. And Lord, let people, let their eyes be turned to you and not the situation and bring wisdom there to those leaders in that area, we pray in your name. Amen. Pentecost. It is an integral part of the world of the Charismatic Church. Originally a Jewish holiday in celebration of the spring harvest, today Pentecost more notably serves as a day to celebrate the anniversary of God's outpouring of His Holy Spirit upon the church in the first century. Understanding the events of Pentecost grant understanding to God's call upon His church as a whole but also to each person who continues to call upon God's Spirit to be present in their daily lives and ministries. Following the death and resurrection of Jesus during the opening days of the festival of Passover, Jesus spent the following 40 days with his disciples, continuing to teach his followers about the truths of the kingdom of God. Matthew's Gospel says that in this period, Jesus and his followers departed Jerusalem and returned to the place of Jesus' ministry, the Galilee, only to return to Jerusalem once more to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, known in Hebrew as Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. Shavuot is the Jewish holiday that takes place 50 days following the second day of Passover. On his final day with his disciples, Jesus took them to the Mount of Olives, just east of Jerusalem. Overlooking the temple with the city in the backdrop, he said to them, Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. It is not for you to know the times or dates that the Father has set by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus' disciples were perplexed and even responded in part by asking the question, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Why ask this question? After everything that the disciples witnessed during the last 40 days, had they not begun to look at the words of Jesus' ministry in a different light? Following the death and resurrection of Jesus, it became clear that his earthly ministry was about something far different than what once had been perceived. It appears that Jesus' proclamation of the coming of the Holy Spirit was not completely understood by all of his followers. Prior to the events in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit appeared to serve the triune God in a different manner, falling upon those whom God designated for a specific task. In Exodus 31.3, the Spirit fell upon Bezalel, the craftsman of the tabernacle. In Numbers 11.25, the Spirit fell upon the 70 elders for the purpose of prophecy. In 1 Samuel 16, 13, it fell upon David as he was anointed for the future role of king. But most prominently and likely connected to the question asked by Jesus' audience is Judges 3.10, where the Spirit falls upon Othniel, the judge, so that the king of Aram might be put down and Israel might be set free once more. God's intended purpose of His Spirit had not changed. Instead, what changed was the mission it was serving, a mission that Jesus' audience had just been assigned. The mission to serve as His witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, 
Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Just as God the Father of the Old Testament is still the same Father of the New Testament, the Spirit of God continues to move. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of the Lord served to empower those whom God called for individual purposes. Though the Holy Spirit appeared more selectively given in the Old Testament, the manner in which it was given does not differ from the New Testament. The Spirit of the living God falls upon those whom He calls. For each and every believer who bears the truth and the goodness of the gospel is called to serve as His witness. To share with you today. Today is, is Pentecost Sunday, and uh, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. We're a Pentecostal church. Uh, some people ask me, what is a Pentecostal church? Well, we believe that the Holy Spirit is working inside of lives and people today, and we believe in speaking in other tongues. Yes, we do that, and we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to just explain a few things to you today, if I could. Uh, first of all, uh, Pentecost literally that that Sunday of Pentecost which is 50 uh, days after Jesus suffered and went to the cross it also has more uh, background more than that but I'm just going to make it very simple for you today that the Holy Spirit uh, is part of the Godhead yes. and uh, the Holy Spirit came in an incredible way that day now before that we find in in John uh, I believe it's the 20th chapter, verse 21, that, that Jesus breathed on his disciples the Holy Spirit. And that's an incredible passage. John 20, 21 says, and he said again, he said again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. Yes. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. That receiving of the Holy Spirit at that particular time was an inward effect that took place in their lives. Holy Spirit came in and, and I call that the, the regeneration time where, where we find in, in salvation and in those times that, that God just begins to change the inner man, changes the inner man. Well, Jesus didn't stop there because he also, even though he's talking to the same group, he told them to go and wait for the Holy Spirit and he said, you'll be baptized, and it is, it, it is to the same group that he's tell, telling us to, you'll be baptized with the Spirit. And Acts 1-3 says this, During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time and proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once while he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift of he promised, as I told you before, John baptized with water, just, but just in a few days he'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Mm. So it's, it's, it's two different sections, two different things. They say, well, how can I be baptized with the Holy Spirit if I've already received the Holy Spirit? Well, the, the, this is an outward thing that begins to change the outwardness of us. It literally begins to change how we begin to view things, how we do things. The scripture goes on to say, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore the kingdom? And you know, oftentimes we get a spiritual thing here going, and the first thing we want to do is rise up and, and, and say, okay, now it's time to bear arms. Well, that's not what it's about here at all. And Jesus replies to them. He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set the dates and the times. They are not for you to know, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And Jesus was saying, let me introduce you to this gift, the Holy Spirit, part of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we look in Genesis, and I was sharing this in our Zoom prayer meeting on Wednesday night. In Genesis 11, chapter, verse 3, it says, And they began to say unto each other, Let us make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone, and the tar was used for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky, and then will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. 
I, I just love how we, we begin to think on crazy things like this. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. And that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world. And they stopped building the city. That is why the city was called Babel. In other words, they're, they're babbling. That's the idea of the word Babel there. Because that is where the Lord confused the people with different languages in the same way he scattered them all over the world. God had a problem, and the problem was these people were getting so lost in themselves, so focused on themselves, that they actually thought they were building a stairway into the, into the heavens. They would become this thing unto themselves is what they were trying to do at that particular mm -hmm. time. God changed their language, totally changed their language and scattered them. Now, if you notice, that was way back in the book of Genesis. But over in the book of Acts, there's this reversal thing that takes place. And I call a reversal. In Acts, the second chapter, verse 4, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. They were all together, one accord in one place. They were together on this. I love that. They were seeking after this Holy Spirit that Jesus said, you guys go wait for the Holy Spirit to come. He's going to come, and he's going to baptize you. You know, you've been baptized before in water, but we're going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, and it's going to be an incredible time. And, and the scripture goes on to say in verse 2 there, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues of, as of fire, and one sat on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. Now remember, they'd all been divided up with all sorts of languages. Well, they had all sorts of people divided uh, from every nation, speaking various languages. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. You see what just happened there? <laughs> we had this splitting apart that we find in Genesis and this coming back together through the incredible work of the Holy Spirit at that point in time. And there was dwelling in Jerusalem, devout Jews and devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? In other words, why are these local dudes doing this? <laughs> why, how, do they, how are they even beginning to do this? And they were talking about people are speaking in, in their own language because, you know, us guys over here were born over there, we were born over there, we were born someplace else, and yet these guys are speaking our language. And it's amazing how when God divided them up back in Genesis, that we find in the book of Acts there on this day of Pentecost, they came back together, united together in the Spirit of God. Tremendous passage. Tremendous passage. And God unifies the language of the Holy Spirit. They're speaking languages these guys have never spoken before. They're speaking language and people over here are understanding, even though these guys haven't been taught that language, they're understanding that language. Tremendous miracle taking place. Then Pentecost, as we celebrate Pentecost, Pentecost has a tendency not just to keep us in this little mold, it sends us out. Acts 1-3 says, during the 40 years after he suffered and died, plus the time they waited from the gift from the Father, as Jesus has promised, that's where we get that day of Pentecost. Also has a lot to go back into history of the Jewish people. The day of Pentecost, is actually the first day of harvest. First day of harvest. <clears throat> and that first day of harvest is the, I believe, is, is, is the birthing point that they begin to move and Pentecost literally sends them out to minister in other ways and other forms. Now, 
the church at that time was adding to it daily and people were coming in crowds and they had crowds of people all over the place. They were mainly meeting in the Gentile area of the courts and people were coming together and it was, there were places that said they added 4,000, 3,000, you know, all these things and, and they were adding daily to the church and it was just growing like crazy. But persecution also mm. came. Yes. I believe we're in times of persecution today. Persecution where uh, people don't care about things of God. and People don't care about other things. And th there's, this persecution has caused us, and I hear people complaining about all the persecution, but I've turned it around in my life and said, God, what are you doing in this time of persecution? What are you doing in this time when I can't hold church? And I feel like it's persecution. Mm -hmm. What are you doing during this time? And what are you doing to me? Well, it's my time to begin to seek after God more than ever before. Draw hunger and thirst after his things and just draw into God and say, God, what do you have me to do? Because in the times of persecution, that's the time that they began to scatter and move out in all sorts of directions. And the church was birthed in a way that we just can't even begin to understand today. It just began to grow and grow and grow. Pentecost gave them the power to go beyond themselves. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. In other words, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem and throughout Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. And John 14, 12 says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works as I have done, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. In Genesis, it was all about people impacting themselves, mm -hmm. building themselves up. But in the day of Pentecost, it became, it came, became a thought of impacting others. Mm -hmm. Not building themselves up, but impacting right. others. In this world we live in today, it's about impacting the world around us. Mm -hmm. And one of the greatest things we have today is God's love that comes into our lives and begins to change us. Some of you over the last few weeks have asked Jesus Christ to come into your life. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit has come into you at that point in time. He's regenerating you. He's changing you. But the Holy Spirit also wants to impact your entire being mm -hmm. and change you even greater. And I'm praying today that God's impact would, would come into you and begin to change you and move you across racial divides, move you across cultural divides, move you across many barriers, move you across all sorts of things that may be coming against and maybe holding you back in all sorts of ways. You say, well, I can't do anything. I'm locked in this little, uh, locked up in this little place here. Well, the early church was that way. There were times where they were hiding in their homes. Couldn't even move yes. out because of the government, yeah. because of the scribes and the Pharisees and other people that were coming against them and, and the attacks that were going on in the early church there. Well, it, it is in that time that God began to pour himself out to his people and they began to move and began to do and began to share the word of God in tremendous new ways. Mm -hmm. We have the advantage today of, of sharing with you on the internet. We're actually moving outside of our walls. Just a phenomenal way to that we can do this. There's some other ways you can also do it. Sometimes when we go back to work, you're going to have the opportunity of sharing it beyond your four walls. But I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will empower you to begin to do things in ways and forms that are not normal to what you usually do. Yes. You know, the book of Genesis talked about these guys were all lost in themselves. Mm. We've been in a world that's been lost about itself. That's right. But I believe that God wants to take us beyond yes. those walls. Mm -hmm. And the best way to celebrate Pentecost is to move beyond our walls. It's not about coming back to a building. It's not coming back to all sorts of things. And you know, I miss getting together with my brothers and <laughs> sisters. I really miss that. Yes. But it's beyond us. It's moving beyond us and it's, it's saying, God, how do you want me to relate to somebody else? Is there something I can relate outside here or share with somebody else? Not just in a church form, but beyond that in my neighborhood or wherever I'm at. You know, we had a, a, a basketball backboard that got stolen out of the church over the last few days. 
And I was kind of frustrated with it first. And I said, Lord, this is not even fair. We're closed right now as far as the building's concerned. And, and somebody comes along and just steals it. I, we can't even mm -hmm. figure out how they took it out of there. Mm -hmm. Took it out. You know, it's one of those freestanding things and just totally stole it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't understand. I don't understand that. And I'm just asking the Lord to somehow replace that thing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I am not built around a basketball backboard. Okay. I'm built around the fact that God has a plan for each yes. one of us. Amen. Even though the enemy may try to come and steal things out of your life, mm -hmm. and even though the enemy may come and try to strip things out of your life, God has a plan for you. And we celebrate Pentecost today Amen. because we just begin to get lost in Jesus mm -hmm. and His presence, lost in God's presence that is incredible. Yes. You know, the presence of God was with Moses at the burning bush. And it was, it was a fire that also led the children of Israel by nighttime, a cloud by day, and, and fire by night. And you know what happened on the day of Pentecost? Cloven tongues of fire yes. sat upon each one of them. Kind of reminding them the presence of God is there. And I believe the presence of God wants to rest on each person here that's watching today. Yes. They said, well, how do I be, begin to seek after the Holy Spirit? What do I begin to do? I begin to worship Jesus. Yes. I begin to love yes. on Him yes. and glorify yes. His name and just begin to thank Him and praise His holy yes. name. That's what I begin to do. Yes. Starts with salvation. Yes. That's the inward thing that begins to happen. And then Pentecost begins to go outward because we speak it out. Yes. It's an outward thing that begins to happen. So we start with the inward. Maybe you don't have a right relationship with Jesus Christ today. And maybe you'd like to invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart and life. I'd like you to pray a prayer after me if that's what you'd like to do, inviting Jesus. And I just want to have you pray a prayer so that you'll begin to start this journey with God. You say, well, I'm not sure what to do. Well, that's why I'm going to have you do that. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to start that journey with God today, mm -hmm. would you just repeat this prayer after me? Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Come into my heart and life. Come into my heart and life. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Make me pure and clean within. Make me pure and clean within. Change the inward man. Change the inward man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For coming into my heart and life. For coming into my heart and life. And I want to journey after you, Jesus. And I want to journey after you, Jesus. I want you to be the center of my life. I want you to be the center of my life. Amen. Amen. Maybe you haven't received the Holy Spirit yet. And you'd like to receive the Holy Spirit. I oftentimes tell people to begin to just praise Him, begin to worship Him. Yes. The more you draw into Jesus, the more He, he just wants to pour into your life. Yes. Hallelujah. If you'd like to know more about that, I'd love to explain that a little bit more to you. But... I just want to end this today by just worshiping Jesus for a moment. Can we just do that? There's an old, old chorus that we used to sing, and it goes like this. Jesus, 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 there's just something about Master, Savior, Master.
Lord for you today that the Lord might bless you, keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Glory to his name. Amen and amen. May God bless you today.